Well, here we are. It's October. Fall. Really fall season now over here. Especially over here. My goodness, finally. Feels like good weather outside. I'll take you that much. So, yeah. There's a lot of takeaways this week, honestly. But, I mean, when you say Bowers, Bowers, Bowers three times in a row, I mean, you got something cooking. So, yeah, week five. A lot of things happened this week in the fifth week of college football. We have Brock Bowers saving Georgia's skin. Ray Davis going off against Florida. You know, Riley Leonard hurt himself against Notre Dame very late in that game. Duke fought really hard. But ultimately, Leonard being lost will impact this team for a while. Um, and, I mean, they the defense had a chance to make a play late. But, uh, yeah, so, you know, the high ankle sprain for Leonard, he won't be done for the year, but he will be done for a little bit. You know, and it's it's gonna it's it's gonna be it's gonna be something. You know, it's gonna be something to see if Duke can adjust. And I mean, Ray Davis for real though. Two hundred yards, two hundred plus yards, nearly three hundred. You know, against Florida, man, good stuff. Florida's lost to Kentucky what three straight times now. That's rough, buddy. That's real rough. Um, other teams like Oregon, Oklahoma, Texas, Penn State, Michigan, they easily take care of business. Uh, some teams were a little bit more, you know, they were a little bit more of a, uh, you know, slow getting to where they got to the point. You know, Penn State was tied with Northwestern for quite a bit in that game. You know, Northwestern actually had the lead at one point. Uh, Michigan. Easily took care of business. Oregon started off slow. Oklahoma was in a dogfight with Iowa State, you know, for a while. Like, uh, you know, Oklahoma's defense, you know. It, it, Oklahoma is a night and day type team where Oklahoma can put up 60 points and make it look easy. And yet Oklahoma put up 60 points against Iowa State, and it still didn't feel like enough because it felt like Iowa State could try and, you know, do something. I mean, that first quarter or two, Iowa State was in this game against Oklahoma. You can't have that. You know, Texas started out slow too, but again, the injury um, to Jalen Daniels, you know, who just decided not to play. So Jason Bean came in. Jason Bean, although, you know, Jason Bean isn't really a good quarterback and everything like that, it, it just wasn't enough to stop, you know, Jonathan Brooks wasn't enough to stop. <laughs> the Texas defense. You know, Oklahoma's defense finally woke up at the end. Penn State's defense is suffocating. My goodness, if you bet on that Penn State Northwestern game like I did, uh, you probably lost some money like, during the game. I thought Northwestern could actually run a little bit. But no, Penn State's defense is one of the best in the country for a reason. Speaking of defenses, USC's is bad. Really, really bad. Thought. Thought USC was going to dominate Colorado completely, and they did for like maybe a quarter. And then Colorado came back and almost had the chance to get the ball back late. Yeah, that was rough. USC, if their defense can't get it together, they're not going to make it. Speaking of defenses that will not make it to the end of the season, LSU, their season is over. Basically, in terms of college football playoff, you know, aspirations, that defense has been cooked too many times to count this year. And Ole Miss was able to get it done very late in this game, very late in this big-time rivalry. LSU can still win the West, but, yeah, those playoff hopes, they are dead for the moment because there's still the small possibility that a two-loss team can get in. But does LSU have what it takes to win the West first? They have to win the SEC West, and they've already lost to Ole Miss. So they're behind, and it's kind of a three-way thing. You know, Alabama has beaten Ole Miss, and Ole Miss has beaten LSU. So now a rubber match, the Alabama-LSU game, which has been a game that has been really good lately. Could decide things in the West yet again. Or, alternatively... 
we could get we could get some even crazier results because there there might be crazier results in the SEC. But we will see. So you look at the slate as I move myself over a little bit. Look at the slate this week. Oh my goodness, we got an interestingly good slate again. Oklahoma and Texas are unbeaten. Top twelve matchup: Red River down in Dallas, down close to me. Will I be going to this game? Absolutely not. Okay, the tickets cost four hundred dollars. Absolutely not. Not doing it. I will watch the game happily on either Puffer or um, y'all know where else. Some of y'all, some of y'all do not stream legally, so I know I know some of y'all know where I'm talking about. Um, yeah, LSU Missouri is another ranked matchup early, and then you have Maryland Ohio State, which is also pretty early. Um, North Carolina is still unbeaten. Alabama, Texas A&M is going to be interesting. Virginia Tech is terrible. They take on Florida State, Kentucky, Georgia. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This, this is the same night as Fast Lane, so I don't know how I'm going to be able to watch um, the key late games in that in that late window. You know, uh, you know the prime time window, the Kentucky, Georgia, the Notre Dame, Louisville, um, the Little Brown Jug. You know, not going to really watch. The Michigan Minnesota game, but it's a game worth mentioning. And then that Fresno State Wyoming game, that's the first ever Mountain West game that has been broadcast on Fox in the regular season. They've done the Mountain West Championship on Fox for like the last couple of years due to the new media deal that the Mountain West has, but it's never been a football game. And Fresno State Wyoming, again, Wyoming's a really good team, as we all know. If you watch them play Texas, Somehow on Longhorn Network, you know, they, they played Texas tough for three quarters plus. So that is not a team that is a slash. If Fresno State has beaten two Power 5 teams already, and they're ranked number 24 for a reason with Mikey Keane and company. Uh, but in those two Pac-12 after dark games, um, again, like like I said, you're going to have to have the Pac-12 Network. So, we you know, you don't got to talk about Coach Prime for a little bit, you know. Because, again, it is what it is with the Pac-12 Network. So, there's gonna be like three or four games, three games on the Pac-12 network this week. So that's that's interesting, you know. Um, and then there's some SEC network, ACC network games as well that are going to be interesting to look at because Arkansas, Georgia Tech are definitely teams that can you know make some noise. Uh, so yeah, the Dylan Gabriel, Quinn Ewers duel in the Cotton Bowl gonna be fun. This game might not take four hours like it like it has been, but it will definitely take a good three hours. It will take at least three and a half hours. Just saying. Um, thankfully, the game is early, so you know that that will definitely help things out. Um, and over here, I mean, my goodness, people going to the fair and stuff like that. It's been a lot of debating. Do I go to the fair? I don't know, but I'm gonna probably go early. And like early in the afternoon, next uh, this upcoming Friday, that's what I'm gonna probably do. I'm not going on on Saturday. I'm going late. Go early. Do what I need to do, which is finally experience the state fair. Get out. That's the plan. We'll see if the execution goes well. If I decide to go, I'm still debating about it. But yeah, state fair. Cotton Bowl, Red River, beautiful time, best time of the year, honestly. And then, you know, the other early games, again, Missouri stuck early in the early game with LSU, Brady Cook taking on Jay Daniels. I mean, this is going to be an offensive shootout. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a doozy. Um, one of these teams will probably be knocked out of the top 25 based on where they are. So, you know, LSU probably shouldn't be in the top 25 at all. But if Missouri loses, oh yeah, they're definitely getting knocked out. So, going to be one hell of a game between Missouri and LSU. Um, Max Johnson, who's now the guy since Connor Weichman is done for the year. Um, the Yaggies, they're back from the dead after losing to Miami. But can they put one of Saban's weirdest teams to bed early? Because remember, Alabama has a, well, a loss already to Texas. It would be crazy if they lose to both Texas and Texas A&M in the same year. 
be crazy. Alabama fans will be furious. I know Saban's already furious about the loss he already has. And, you know, they took care of Mississippi State because Mississippi State is Mississippi State. Texas A&M is trying to be different. Trying to. Are, are they succeeding? I don't know. But, yeah, Texas A&M, um, they're, they're getting their act together. But they're going to need more than that. It's Nick Saban versus Jimbo Fisher. What kind of ma- what kind of matchup are we getting? Because we're getting something good. Um, and Texas A&M has beaten Alabama a couple times over the past few years. So they've had Alabama's number. One of those teams that have had Alabama's number over the past couple of years. So they need to get it going. Uh, Talia Takavailoa to his brother, the Terps, who are unbeaten, unranked. And they're unranked because they haven't really beaten anything worth mentioning. So, uh, But Maryland has also played Ohio State pretty close the past few years. So they need to get it done because this is an Ohio State team that is not the greatest looking. Again, we've seen Ohio State throughout the year kind of struggle. So, you know, this is the ripe opportunity to get it done against Ryan Day and Connor McCord. Kyle McCord. Why did I say Connor? I meant Kyle. But again, you know, Ohio State still has Buka and Harris Jr. So, you know, and, and the backs in the backfield and a really good defense. So it's just about the execution. Again, about the execution. And, and then Jahar Jordan and those Cardinals, Jamari Thrash, you know, really good Cardinals team who really haven't. Really, you know, they haven't beaten too many teams in the post either. They did beat NC State. You know, NC State hasn't really, you know, shown us anything, you know, the common type of victory. But Notre Dame beat the brakes off of NC State and Louisville not in a slugfest type game. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and Notre Dame is going to be another. This is like the third straight ranked matchup for Notre Dame. This is like the third straight primetime game that Notre Dame has had. Like in late window, I don't know where we're getting this from, but all right, more Notre Dame late games. All right, all right. So yeah, this one's gonna be interesting to see, you know, because Notre Dame their season could end if they lose at some point. They still have a they still have a pretty good chunk of games remaining where they could lose, and that that could end their season. And this is one of them actually because, um, you know. Louisville can can do some damage, but Notre Dame they they got to be a little bit tougher than that, you know. Duke, you know, Duke didn't really have the firepower, and that kind of says a lot about Clemson. But Louisville has some firepower. Louisville has some firepower, and they can do some damage. So this kind of says a lot about the ACC in general. It's kind of a weird conference this year, but yeah. So that's that's gonna do it for me. I'm really I don't really have much else to say. There's other matchups that are interesting again in this slate, but you know, to each his own. Whatever you're watching this weekend, I hope you're gonna have as much fun as I am with this. Because man, we got some good college football cooking. It cooks every weekend, and it continues to cook. Cannot wait for this weekend. Until next Tuesday. You know, talking college football anyway. I will see you all around. Bye-bye.